today we are going to study the hip bones there are two hip bones in the body one on the right side one on the left side and they uh, both of the hip bones together they form the pelvic girdle the pelvic girdle unites the lower limb with the axial skeleton as in this picture you can see that both the hip bones are joined to each other anteriorly at this point this is the anterior part of the hip bones they are joined to form the pubic symphysis and posteriorly they are joined to this bone which is the sacrum this is the part of the axial skeleton and this is the point where the lower limb is attached to the hip bone now the hip bone is uh, composed of three bones as you can see in this picture they are colored differently this bone the upper bone this is called the ilium this bone the red the one shown in red is called the pubis and this one is the ischium Ilium is the superior bone, pubis is the anterior bone, and ischium is the posterior bone. This is the medial view of the hip bone, and if we see the lateral view here, you can see a small depression in the middle. This portion is called the acetabulum. This is where the lower limb, uh, the femur of the lower limb gets attached, the head of the femur gets attached. And this is the point where all three parts of the hip bone are united. As yes, you can see with different colors, this portion of the acetabulum is formed by the ilium. This portion, the posterior portion of the acetabulum is formed by the ischium. And then the anterior portion of the acetabulum is formed by the pubis. And you can see this Y-shaped attachment of all three bones. All three bones, they ossify from different ossification centers. And eventually when they fuse, uh, now here in uh, first they are cartilaginous here and if you take an x-ray of a young person you can see a, a sign which resembles the monogram of mercedes-benz car so if you take an x-ray of a young person you can see that monogram like sign on the next on that x-ray and that is called the mercedes-benz sign that does not mean that the bone is broken there but basically it is it has not ossified yet so as we have already discussed this is the real bone so this upper part of the bone this is the ilium this is the pubis and this is the ischium so we should know that the ilium lies superiorly the pubis lies anteromedially and the pubis lies posterolaterally so we will try to put the bone in anatomical position uh, it is a bit difficult to understand in this video but once you get your hands on this bone it will be very easy for you to understand <clears throat> now to understand the anatomical position we will keep the ilium superiorly and obviously the pubis and ischium will come on the inferior aspect so now you know the superior and the inferior aspects of the bone now we have to see which is the interior and which is the posterior aspect of the bone so as i have already told you the pubis lies anteriorly and the ischium lies posteriorly so this is the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect of the bone so now you know superior aspect the inferior aspect the anterior aspect and the posterior aspect now you have to determine the medial and the lateral aspect that is very simple you just have to see this depression which is called the acetabulum it is always on the lateral side as the limb lower limb or the femur of the lower limb has to attach to this part it obviously will be on the lateral side so now you also know the medial and the lateral side so let's try to uh, bring this bone into the anatomical position so if the person if this person who uh, this hip bone belongs to is standing in a position that he is facing towards you the hip bone will be somewhat like this now uh, as we have only one hip bone at the time you have to imagine the other hip bone and you have to make a joint with the other hip bone the other hip bone is attached to this hip bone at this point this to form the pubic symphysis so if you have one bone in your hand you can make the pubic symphysis of the other bone with your finger like this and this bone will come into anatomical position so this was the anatomical position of this bone as seen from the anterior aspect now if we try to see it from the posterior aspect this is how the bone will be placed you make the pubic symphysis with the opposite of the opposite bone with your finger and you have to keep this surface tilted upwards and backwards like this so this is 
roughly the anatomical position of the hip bone so now you know the ilium is kept superiorly the pubis anteromedially the ischium posterolaterally and this surface of the pubis is kept posterior superiorly and this is how you form the pubic symphysis with the other finger and you know the anatomical position of this bone as seen from the posterior aspect now we will try to see the features of all the parts of the hip bone one by one we will start from the ilium so as we have already discussed the ilium is the upper part of the hip bone this fan shaped portion it has an upper end this expanded upper end which is called the iliac crest it has a lower end the lower end is obviously not visible as it has already fused with the pubis and the ischium so i have tried to mark it with a pencil so you can understand where the lower end of the ilium is so uh, let's start to understand its features so the ilium has three uh, borders we have already discussed it has an upper end a lower end now i'm going to tell you about its borders it has three borders an interior border a posterior border and a medial border so the part of the bone which you are looking at right now is the medial aspect of the bone this part this portion is called the anterior border of the bone this is the posterior border of the bone up to this mark and this thing this is the medial border of the bone up to this mark so these are the three borders of the bone anterior border a posterior border and a medial border so automatically it divides the bone into three surfaces one is the iliac fossa which this is the iliac fossa which lies between the anterior border and the medial border then comes the sacropelvic surface which lies between the posterior borders and the medial border so this portion this rough and smooth part these are all the parts of the sacropelvic surface now uh, the third surface which is the lateral surface is also called the gluteal surface this is the gluteal surface of the bone and it lies between the anterior border and the posterior borders so this outer surface of the bone is called the gluteal surface of the bone now uh, let's see the iliac crest if you try to see the iliac crest from the superior aspect you can see it has two curves so iliac crest starts from a projection on the anterior part of the bone this is called the anterior superior iliac spine and it moves all the way backwards to another projection on the back of the bone this is called the posterior superior iliac spine so the iliac crest extends from the anterior superior iliac spine anteriorly and runs all the way back to the posterior superior iliac spine posteriorly this is the posterior superior iliac spine now if you see it from the superior aspect you can see that it shows two curves the anterior curve is convex outwards and it forms a little more than the two thirds of the iliac crest and the posterior curve is concave outwards concave outwards and it forms the posterior less than posterior one third of the iliac crest the iliac crest the anterior two thirds the anterior two thirds of the iliac crest has an inner lip if you can see this this is very clear it has an inner lip it has an outer lip and it has an intermediate zone which lies between the two lips this is the inner lip this is the outer lip so this area is the intermediate zone of the iliac crest of the anterior two thirds of the iliac crest now if we see the posterior part of the iliac crest it is it has a sharp ridge on the superior aspect this one this sharp ridge on the superior aspect then it has an inner slope and an outer slope so the anterior aspect has two lips and an intermediate zone and the posterior aspect has a sharp superior ridge and an inner slope and an outer slope now if we see the outer aspect of the iliac crest and follow the outer lip of the iliac crest you see here there is a small projection this is called the iliac tubercle 
and the highest point of the iliac crest lies just behind this iliac tubercle approximately this point is the highest point of the iliac crest and it corresponds to the intervertebral disc between l3 and l4 vertebrae now let's try to understand the borders of the bone so uh, you can see this is the anterior border of the hip bone which starts from the anterior superior iliac spine and it goes down to a point where i have marked with the red pencil to show the attachment with the pubis so this is the lower limit of the anterior border of the ilium and if you see after uh, the anterior superior iliac spine there is a depression and again there is an elevation so this elevated area of the anterior border below the anterior superior iliac spine is called the anterior inferior iliac spine of the hip bone <clears throat> now coming to the posterior aspect we have already discussed this is the posterior superior uh, iliac spine and this is the posterior border of the hip bone and it goes all the way up to this red mark which i have <clears throat> if you can see this is the red mark to show its attachment with the ischium so the posterior border starts from the posterior superior iliac spine and as we come down it has another projection here which is called the posterior inferior iliac spine after that there is a big notch this notch is called the greater sciatic notch and it is formed by the posterior border of the ilium and it continues down with the posterior border of the ischium so this thing is called the greater sciatic notch and it is formed in part by the posterior border of the ilium this portion is the medial border of the ilium it separates the iliac fossa from the sacropelvic surface now let's understand the surfaces of the bone as i have already told you the portion between the anterior border and the medial border this is the iliac fossa after that the portion between the medial border and the posterior borders this is the sacropelvic surface the sacropelvic surface is divided into three parts the upper part which is a rough elevated structure this is called the iliac tuberosity after that you can see an ear shaped structure roughly an ear shaped structure this is called the auricular surface as you know the ear a human ear is also called auricle or pinna the structure which you can see on the outside so it roughly resembles that ear of the human so this is called auricular surface so this is the ischial tuberosity this is the auricular surface and this smooth portion the rest of the smooth portion of this sacropelvic surface is called the pelvic surface of the ilium now let's try to understand the lateral aspect of the bone this lateral aspect of the ilium is also called the gluteal surface of the bone and uh, it lies between the anterior border of the ilium and the posterior border of the ilium so this surface is called the lateral surface or the gluteal surface of the hip bone if you can see the gluteal surface of the hip bone has three gluteal lines one is this this is called the posterior gluteal line the other one is this if you can appreciate this is the anterior gluteal line so i'll try to show it this is the posterior gluteal line this is the anterior gluteal line and this down here this one is the inferior gluteal line so the gluteal surface of the hip bone or the lateral surface of the hip bone lies between the anterior of the ilium or lies between the anterior border and the posterior borders and this surface is called the gluteal surface it has three gluteal lines one is this the posterior gluteal line near the posterior border and the other one is the anterior gluteal line this one and third is the inferior gluteal line this one which lies just above the acetabulum now let's try to understand the features of the pubis the pubis is the antero inferior part of the hip bone <laughs> here you can see the pubis it has a body this is the body of the pubis it has a superior ramus 
this is the superior ramus of the pubis and this here this small thing is called the inferior ramus of the pubis this portion is the ramus of the ischium this is not the ramus of the pubis and if you can see closely you can see the union of the rami of the pubis and the ischium at this point and here's a small elevation which marks the elevation which marks the union of the rami of the pubis and the ischium so pubis has a small inferior ramus and ischium has a long ramus but the superior ramus of the pubis is long so this is the body of the pubis it has three surfaces this is the posterior surface or the pelvic surface it comes inside the cavity of the pelvis this is the medial surface which is also called the symphysial surface because it forms the pubic symphysis with the opposite with the opposite hip bone so this is the medial or symphysial surface and this here is the anterior surface of the pubis of hip bone now if we see on uh, the superior aspect you can see there is a small ridge this is a small ridge which is called the pubic crest and if we move laterally on this ridge you can see there is a small elevation this elevation is called the pubic tubercle and this is a very important landmark we'll discuss that later so this is the pubic crest which starts from the pubic symphysis and ends at the pubic tubercle and this is the elevation which is called the pubic tubercle so these were the features of the body of pubis it has a pelvic surface a medial surface or the symphysis surface and an anterior surface it also has a crest which is called the pubic crest which lies on the superior aspect of the bone and if we move laterally on the crest you reach a tubercle an elevation which is called the pubic tubercle so now coming to the features of the superior ramus of the pubis the superior ramus has three borders and it has three surfaces the border which you can see here this is the superior border of the ramus of pubis this border is also called the pectineal line so the superior border of the pubis is also called the pectineal line and it is continuous with the medial border of the ilium which we discussed earlier and the point where the two borders meet this portion is called the ilio pubic eminence ilio from the ilium and pubic from the pubis and both unite here to form the ilio pubic eminence so this superior border is also called the pectin pubis here uh, there is a large gap between the pubis and the ischium this large gap is called the obturator foramen so now uh, if we see the ramus of the pubis it has an inferior border a superior border and an inferior border so the inferior border marks uh, makes the upper margin of the obturator foramen this superior inferior border of the ramus of the pubis forms the upper margin of the obturator foramen and uh, the last border is uh, in on the anterior aspect this is the anterior border or this is also called the obturator crest so once again we will see all the borders this is the superior border this here is the inferior border the superior border is also called the pectin pubis or the pectineal line and it is continuous with the medial border of the ilium at the iliopubic eminence so if we see the anterior aspect this is the anterior border of the pubis and this is also called the obturator crest if you see at one end it starts approximately from the pubic tubercle on the other end it reaches the acetabulum at a point which is called the acetabular notch so it uh, reaches the end of one end of the acetabular notch so now uh, we will discuss the surfaces of the pubis or ramus of the pubis so between the superior ramus superior border that is the pectineal line and the inferior border this surface is called the pelvic surface which you can see is continuous with the pelvic surface of the body of pubis the surface between the superior border and the obturator crest or the anterior border this surface is called the pectineal surface the pectineal surface as you can see is continuous with the iliac fossa of the ilium so this is the pelvic surface between the superior border and the inferior border this is the pectineal surface between the superior border and the obturator crest 
so the portion of the pubic ramus superior ramus of pubis which lies between the obturator crest and the inferior border this surface of the pubis ramus of the pubis is called the obturator surface of pubis now we will discuss the features of the ischium ischium is the postero inferior or posterolateral bone of the part of the hip bone it has three borders and it has three surfaces and it has a ramus and a tuberosity we will discuss all these things one by one so uh, this portion this is the body of the ischium which is a massive bone a thick stout bone it has three surf borders this is the anterior border which forms a margin of the obturator foramen it also has a posterior border this is the anterior border and this is the posterior border you can see the posterior border is continuous with the posterior border of the ilium as we already discussed so this is the posterior border of ilium which forms the greater sciatic notch and the lower part of the greater sciatic notch is formed by the posterior border of the ischium as we continue down on the posterior border of the ischium we see there is another elevation after the greater sciatic notch there comes an elevation which is called the ischial spine so this is the ischial spine and after the ischial spine there is another depression which is called the lesser sciatic notch so all these features are seen in the posterior border of the ischium so again i will uh, the ischium the posterior border of the ischium is continuous with the posterior border of the ilium at the greater sciatic notch so it forms the lower part of the greater sciatic notch as we continue down there comes an elevation which is called the ischial spine and it is very prominent in some bones after the ischial spine there comes a depression on the posterior border of the ischium and this depression is called the lesser sciatic notch so this is the anterior border which forms the margin of the obturator foramen and this is the posterior border then we come to the lateral border of the ischium this thing here this dark large thing is the ischial tuberosity so the posterior border of the ischium was forming a margin the lateral uh, the medial margin of the ischial tuberosity and the lateral margin of the ischial tuberosity is also called the lateral border of the ischium so uh, now we have three borders and which contain three surfaces so we have a surface between the anterior and the posterior borders of the hip bone and this surface <coughs> is called the pelvic surface of the uh, ischium <coughs> as we have already discussed that the all the surfaces they are called the pelvic surfaces because they lie in the pelvic cavity they basically form the boundary of the pelvic cavity <clears throat> so this is the pelvic surface of the ischium which lies between the anterior border and the posterior border of the ischium then comes the dorsal surface of the ischium the dorsal surface of the ischium lies between the posterior border and the lateral border this basically is the dorsal surface this is the dorsal surface of the ischium and it is continuous with the gluteal surface of the ilium so the dorsal surface of the ischium is continuous with the gluteal surface of the ilium behind the obturator foramen then the last surface of the ischium is lying between the anterior border and the lateral border the lateral border was forming the lateral boundary of the ischial tuberosity and the anterior border was forming the margin of the obturator foramen so between the lateral border and the anterior border lies the femoral surface of the ischium because the femur bone the head of the femur attaches to the acetabulum and the shaft of the femur passes from here so this surface is named so uh, because the femur passes over it so this is called the femoral surface of the ischial ischium <coughs> this is the conjoined ischial pubic ramus as i have already told you that you can see an elevation over here which shows the union of the of the rami of the inferior ramus of the pubis and the ramus of the ischium so this is the conjoined ischial pubic ramus the conjoined ischial pubic ramus has a superior border and an inferior border <coughs> 
the superior border forms the margin of the obturator foramen and the inferior border forms the pubic arch <clears throat> it forms the pubic arch when the other hip bone is uh, attached to this hip bone you can see there is an arch formed over here so this forms the lower border of the conjoined issue by bicramus forms a margin of the pubic arch which will be completed when the other hip bone is united to this hip bone now it has two surfaces a pelvic surface which lies uh, on the pelvic surface uh, on the pelvic aspect of the hip bone and an outer surface which lies on the outer aspect of the hip bone so the last thing which is left is the acetabulum the acetabulum is a depression on the lateral aspect of the bone it has a margin which you can see and this margin is deficient inferiorly and this deficient inferior portion of this margin is called the acetabular notch if you see the floor of the acetabulum there is an articular surface which is smooth and it is horseshoe shaped surface and this is called the lunate surface of the uh, acetabulum the floor is rough and it houses a bursa and one thing which i forgot to tell you is that the obturator surface of the <coughs> superior ramus of a bone it leads to a notch which is called the obturator uh, groove now if we see the ischial tuberosity and the ischial tuberosity uh, the surface of the ischial tuberosity <coughs> is divided into a superior aspect and an inferior aspect by a ridge so this ridge divides the ischial tuberosity into superior and an inferior aspect the superior part is again divided by a ridge into two parts and similarly the inferior part is again divided by a ridge into two parts so these basically are the four parts of the ischial tuberosity